look at this map this map shows the northern plains of india see the northern plains which is this region is located just below the himalayas the northern plains are very fertile and they are rich in alluvium and therefore they are called alluvial plains so now let us discuss how these plains are formed alluvial plains are formed due to depositional work of a river we know in the lower course of a river its speed decreases and it start depositing sediments like silt and other eroded materials the gradual accumulation of these sediments like silt and alluvium leads to the formation of alluvial plains thus alluvial plains are formed due to deposition of silt and alluvium brought down by rivers now the northern plains of india which is located here is an example of alluvial plain the northern plains is formed due to depositional work of rivers like ganga and brahmaputra as you can see in this map this region which extends from here till here is drained by ganga river and brahmaputra river the northern plains are situated at the foothills of the himalayas and here we have the picture of khadar and bhangar plain now khadar and bhangar plains are part of northern plains and these northern plains are situated at the foothills of the himalayas so these mountains are called piedmont alluvial plains thus piedmont alluvial plains are found at the foot of a hill or a mountain now there is another type of alluvial plain let's see what it is now another type of alluvial plain is flood plain a flood plain is formed when a river gets flooded due to torrential rainfall and it overflows this leads to flooding of adjoining areas now when the rainfall stops gradually the water recedes away and deposits sediments along both the sides of its banks and these lead to the formation of flood plains the flood plains are formed when a flooded river deposits sediments along both its sides now an example of a flood plain is the mississippi river flood plain now here we have the map of north america and this map shows the location of mississippi river flood plain see here we have the mississippi river and this region is the flood plain formed due to flooding of mississippi river so here we have an example of a flood plain which is the mississippi river flood plain sometimes a muddy river enters a lake and emerges out as a clear stream why so this is because the river fills the lake with silt and other sediment present in the river and gradually with time the stream disappears and the plains leads to the formation of a lacustrine plain the lacustrine plain is formed due to accumulation of sediments of a pre-existing lake now let us discuss few examples of lacustrine plain now the first example is the plains present in north america see this region that is drained by the great lakes is an example of the lacustrine plain now this plain is formed due to due to accumulation of sediments present in the great lakes another example of lacustrine plain is the plain surrounding the kuleru lake kuleru lake is located in india and this region surrounding the kuleru lake is an example of a lacustrine plain now look at these two plains the plains of central north america and the western european plain see these two plains have an undulating nature that is these plains are not absolutely flat rather these plains have a gentle slope again here also see these plain have a gentle slope now why do these plains have such a relief feature this is because these plains are formed due to glacial deposits that is when a glacier moves over this plain 
it erodes the land surface and such a land structure is formed so now let us see in details how these plains are formed glaciers are moving sheets of ice they act like natural bulldozers that is they scrape the land surface when they move over them now sometimes the glaciers or ice seep into the cracks thus making the cracks wider due to widening of cracks they chuck out pieces of rocks now these fragmented pieces of rocks are gradually carried down by the glaciers and due to rise in temperature the glaciers gradually melt and they deposit all the debris along the plains thus glacier plains are formed due to deposition of debris by glaciers look at this vast yellow stretch of sand they are known as loess they are located in the northern part of china they are formed when strong winds carry and deposit fine silt and sand over a vast region and gradually with time the deposited layers thicken and leads to the formation of loess the loess plains are formed due to deposition of sand by wind so now let us summarize different types of depositional plains the first type of depositional plain is the alluvial plain alluvial plain is formed due to accumulation of silt alluvium and other sediments brought down by rivers thus alluvial plains are formed due to depositional work of a river we have also read about two other types of alluvial plain that is the piedmont alluvial plain now piedmont alluvial plains are located at the foot of a mountain or a hill and another type is flood plain flood plains are formed due to flooding of a river and deposition of sediments along both the sides of its banks another type of depositional plain is the lacustrine plain lacustrine plain is formed due to past existence of a lake and gradually with time the lake dries up and the accumulated sediments forms a plain thus lacustrine plain is formed due to depositional work of a lake okay now the next type is loess so loess are formed due to depositional work of wind the last type is the glacial plains glacial plains are formed when huge glaciers move over the land surface and erode them and gradually when these glaciers melt they deposit the eroded debris thus glacial plains are formed due to depositional work of a glacier thus we can see that deposition is carried by various natural forces like river lake wind and glacier thus on the basis of different agents we can classify depositional plains into various types like alluvial plains lacustrine plains loess plains and finally the glacial plains now before we proceed with our lesson let us answer this question which of the following plain is formed due to the depositional work of the wind is it lacustrine plain alluvial plain flood plain or loess plain well the correct answer is loess plain because we learn that loess plain are formed due to deposition of sand by the wind so here we have the complete chart on various types of plains plains can be broadly classified into two types based on their formation that is structural plains and depositional plains we have already learned that how structural plains are formed structural plains are formed due to upliftment and subsidence of land due to movement of tectonic plates that is structural plains are mostly formed by 
endogenic forces now the second type is depositional planes depositional planes are formed due to deposition of sediments by various natural forces like wind river glaciers etc now based on different natural agents we can classify depositional planes into various types the first type is the alluvial plane alluvial plane is formed due to depositional work of a river the second type is the glacial plane glacial plane is formed due to depositional work of a glacier the planes formed due to depositional work of a wind is called loess and the plane that is formed due to past existence of a lake is called the lacustrine plane thus we can see that depositional planes are formed by exogenic forces while structural planes are formed by endogenic forces so now we have learned about various classifications of planes now let us look how important these planes are for us we know planes are the cradle of early civilizations so from this we can conclude that planes are very important to us this is because planes have several advantages the first is that planes are very fertile especially the alluvial planes that are formed due to deposition of sediments brought down by rivers and because planes are very fertile we can practice agriculture on planes see in this picture we can see that the farmers are cultivating crops on plain lands thus we can practice agriculture on planes now the plains have a flat terrain and due to this irrigation and other modern farming techniques like tractors can be extensively used on plain lands thus plains facilitate irrigation and mechanization of crop production so now let us look into another importance of plains so compare these two maps the first map shows the plains of the world and the second map shows the railway networks of the world see the area of plains coincides with the railway networks like see here we have plains and here we have extensive railway network again here in this part of europe we have uh, plains and again and here we have a strong na railway network and here again in this part of india we have vast plains and again here we have well developed railway networks this is also true for this part of china as well so from these two maps we can conclude that plains are ideal for paving roads and railways and why so because plains have a flat terrain on which we can easily develop land transport thus plains facilitate development of land transport thus we just discussed that plains have several advantages they have fertile terrain which supports agriculture secondly land transport is also well developed on plains and since plains are mostly located near rivers water is also well available in plains thus we can say that plains provides all the facilities which helps in the development of human civilization thus plains are the most populated regions of the world now look at this map this map shows the population density of the world see these regions of north america are densely populated again this region of india where we have vast extensive plains are densely populated again the same is true for china and this region of europe here we have vast extensive plains so from this map we can understand that people mostly live in plains and therefore the population density of plains are very high compared to the other two landforms and so we can conclude that plains are the most populated regions of the world and therefore since plains are thickly populated that is people mostly live on plains mega cities of the world have developed on the plains like new york tokyo 
Mexico and Delhi. All these mega cities are located on plains. Thus, we can conclude that plains are very important for development of human civilization. So, in this lesson, we learnt about different types of depositional plains. Depositional plains can be classified into various types based on the ages. They are alluvial plains, lacustrine plains, glacial plains, and loess plains. And then learnt about several importance of plains. We learned that plains support agriculture, plains also help in the development of land transport and plains provide us with several facilities and due to this most of the people live on plains and therefore plains are thickly populated. And lastly, since plains provide us with various advantages, therefore the megacities of the world are located on the plains. Thus, plains are one of the most important landforms on the earth. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.